Joining us now, three men who know this Florida issue better than pretty much uh, most everyone in the country. Barry Richard is currently Andrew Gillum's attorney. He also represented George W. Bush in the 2000 Florida recount. Miguel DeGrande was also part of that Bush legal team. And Joseph Clock was attorney for Secretary of State Catherine Harris during that very same recount, representing her against all these legal challenges. Uh, Joseph, I want to start with you tonight. Do you think it's wise for Governor Scott to move on the offensive, as I do, against Broward and Palm Beach counties, or is that premature? No, I don't think it's premature. You got to be, you, you have to sort of stay ahead of the, uh, the, the, the flow of what's going on. I, I think all the, I was not aware of the lawsuit until I drove over here tonight, but obviously all he wants to do is just to make sure that there's judicial uh, supervision of what's going on and that things don't happen that ought not happen. Uh, Barry, I want to go to you. You're representing uh, Andrew Gillum. He did concede the other night, but as you said earlier tonight, I heard you. You said, "Look, that's not a that's not a contract." I mean, he thought that it, the moment warranted a concession. But your client and you say you're watching things very closely with the vote count. Last I checked, uh, I think it was about 40,000 or so votes separating Gillum, uh, of course, and Ron DeSantis. What uh, are you looking at tonight? Well, there's a vast difference between 2000 and now. In 2000, uh, recounts were precipitated by the candidates who had to request them and got to select which counties they were in. The legislature, as a result of 2000, has significantly changed Florida statutes. So the candidates really have nothing to do with it now. If the margin between the candidates uh, is less than one half a percent, there's an automatic so-called machine recount where the ballots are sent through the machines again. If it's less than a quarter of a percent, then there's an automatic statewide uh, manual recount. Uh, as far as uh, Mr. Gillum is concerned, he's just waiting for the system to play itself, itself out. This is part of the electoral process. It's part of the vote counting, and he'll accept the results. Miguel, I want to go to you. I think a lot of people watching across the country find it very odd, this whole process of the vote count extending so many days. Explain to the viewers why that is with provisional ballots, what those are, and moving into absentee military counts, which I understand in Florida have not been counted yet. Well, provisional and, absentee and military absentees are one issue, but what we can't understand is why is it that mail-in ballots and early votes uh, are still being counted and have not yet been properly recorded. According to our laws, those votes are supposed to be uploaded the day before election so that they could be reported half an hour after the votes closed the same the next day. So we're at a loss to understand what's happening in Palm Beach and Broward. And it's the same two counties that can't seem to get it right out of our 67 counties in the state of Florida. Well, what about the concern? I want to go back to you, Joseph, about Brenda Snipes in Broward and the concern that Marco Rubio, he was on another network, uh, no, he was on our network earlier tonight, and he just was basically laying waste to what happens in Broward County. Uh, the president tweeted out about this also tonight, which we'll put up on the screen. Can we put it up on the screen and then I'll, I'll, I'll go back to you, Joseph. This is what the president said tonight. Uh, he said, law enforcement is looking into another big corruption scandal having to do with election fraud in Broward in Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, Florida voted for Rick Scott. Um, your comment tonight, Joseph. Well, as Barry said, our legislature thought that they addressed some of the problems to avoid this kind of thing from happening. It's really kind of embarrassing to the state that we have to have this kind of thing go on. And as you know, my county, my home county is Miami-Dade, we don't have this kind of thing happening here. And if, uh, you know, be because Ms. Snipes apparently has this cloud hanging over her head, and then if there is indeed ballots that are now showing up, they shouldn't be. I mean, the only ballots we should be waiting for at this point in time are the military ballots, which I understand have until November 16. So I, I think, you know, we need to make sure that we take whatever steps are necessary with the judiciary to protect the integrity of the system so that uh, we, we don't have these problems. And I think Barry will agree that one of the reasons we still have this is that we don't have statewide controls over balloting. It's done on a county-by-county on a county basis, and that's why you can have these outliers. Uh, 
Got it. Okay, so Barry, you know, I didn't practice election law, but I remember being down in Miami Dade <laughs> during the recount. I think I remember seeing you guys down there at the time, but this is what Rick Scott said. This was just a short while ago, um, referring to Mark Elias uh, in Tallahassee. Let's watch. I will not sit idly by while unethical liberals try to steal this election from the great people of Florida. Senator Nelson hired one of Hillary Clinton's lawyers from D.C., and the first thing he did was tell reporters that he's here to win the election. Now he's here to try to steal the election and to try to thwart the will of the voters of Florida. Barry, your reaction, tough words from uh, Rick Scott tonight. He's certainly not going to sit back and what he believes is going to be an election stolen from him at the hands of uh, Ms. Snipes. Well, I have no reaction. In the first place, I'm not involved in that a race, and in the second place, uh, I, it's not my purpose to become uh, involved in the political debate. I'm just a lawyer representing a client legally, and those <laughs> things are beyond my sphere of, uh, of uh, representation. Oh, the only oh, the old Brendan Sullivan thing. I'm not talking about it. I respect that. Good for you, Barry. Um, Miguel, well, no, I'm, no, that, 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 that's not what I do. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I'm representing a client. I got it. I represent I got Republicans it. and Democrats. Mm -hmm. I didn't say otherwise. I appreciate it. Uh, Miguel, I want to go to you on this because uh, obviously we want to protect the integrity of the vote. I agree with Stacey Abrams and everyone else who said every vote should count. If you voted, you're eligible, eligible to vote, your vote should count. I think what pe what? people watch this and they like, how is this in the United States of America that this, this kind of stuff seems to drag on? People are talking about this dragging on another few weeks in Florida. And I think that's what kind of eats away at people, both uh, Democrats, Republicans, and people on the, uh, you know, in the middle. Laura, I can't agree more. I, I lost my first election to the Florida House of Representatives by one vote in 1988. So I'm very keen on the fact that every vote needs to be counted and an election needs to be tabulated fairly. What concerns us at this point is the irregularities that are occurring when we can't view the ballots uh, being, for example, the ballots that are damaged being duplicated, which is required by law in the presence of witnesses, and we're denied access to that process, when we start hearing that in Palm Beach County there are situations where they are actually taking, uh, you know, steps that are outside of the public domain, that they are uh, divining voter intent when that is the the exclusive providence of the canvassing board and putting those as recorded votes instead of bringing them to the canvassing board for their determination in a public right. process we should all be very concerned yeah, they have to be verified by the proper channels not just divine att intention divine and by the way Gillum's campaign uh, said um, uh, put out a tweet the Gillum campaign is looking for volunteers to help cure leftover ballots what, is it, what does that mean, uh, Barry, since you will talk about your client? We're almost out of time. I get it, guys. Uh, to cure leftover ballots. What does that mean, Barry? To cure leftover ballots? Yeah, that's what your campaign sent out. What does that mean? I, I don't know what it means. Uh, I, I'm not Okay, you I'm represent them, but you don't know what that this... means. Okay. All right. So, well, you know, I don't know they... what it means because I, because I don't know what that reference was to. It's not something I'm involved in. I'm not trying to be difficult for you, but... Yeah. Uh, uh, when I was asked to come on the show, it was to address the differences between the 2000 uh, a, a campaign a re, re, uh, Which, I, we get it. That's that's uh, the point you and, made and earlier. This one, and, I and you're asking me questions that are beyond my. I didn't know. I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know you were so sensitive about what so you can't talk about what the campaign. I'm not that sensitive, you're but I'm not. Got it. Let, okay. Listen, listen. I'm Got not it. a political spokesman. I'm a I lawyer understand. who represents clients. I understand. If you want to ask me about that, I'm happy to respond. Uh, well, this is a this is your client. I imagine talking about. Well, you asked ballots. me what you asked me. You asked me what a state. Statement meant when it said cure ballots. That's not okay. a legal right. term. An, I didn't write the statement, and I don't know what it means. Right. We appreciate <laughs> it, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us.